Hi, good ladies, um, good ladies, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the GSA launch of our partner platform. So I'm um, really excited to be bringing this to you today. We believe it's going to be revolutionary for the sourcing industry and in the selection of service providers. So um, let me just move straight on to introductions and invite my fellow panelists to um, un, um, unblock their videos. Okay, hopefully my team are gonna be joining. And Debbie, I don't have control, so if you can give the control back to me. Thank you. Okay. So what we're going to be running through today, in today's one hour webinar, Why is it going on? Oh, teething problems, kicking this off. Right, so um, let's try that again. Why does it always work in rehearsal? Absolutely flawlessly. And the second you go live, it doesn't. Right, bear with us one second. We'll just kickstart this. Okay. That going to control. We seem to be working again now. Apologies for that small um, disruptive start. So my name is Kerry Hallard. I'm the Chief Exec of the GSA. I've got with me today our chairman. So um, Mark. Good afternoon, good morning or good evening, depending upon where in the world you are. Hello. Or... Yeah, so that's Mark Devonshire, Chair of the GSA. I've um, also got with me Elena Stevenson from Clutch. Uh, Elena, are you there to say hi? Hi, Alan. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, so Elena is with us from Washington, DC. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're not going to have you endure our mugs throughout this um, presentation. We're just going to focus on the deck. And then um, what we're going to do is run through brief introduction to the GSA, what the GSA's program is for 2020, because I think that sets really well the context for the launch of the GSA partner platform. Then we'll obviously go through a demo of the partner platform and then we're going to close with FAM for, for questions and answers. So we will then put ourselves back on video at the time we go through Q&A. Um, please do post questions at any time throughout the webinar, but we'll only come to the questions at the very final stage. So, um, so without further ado, I will um, get off and start the preso. Okay, next slide please, Debbie. Okay, so for those that aren't familiar with the Global Sourcing Association, we are the industry association and professional body for strategic sourcing. We've been going for 34 years now. We are the home of the Global Sourcing Standard and the Global Sourcing Standard is the only standard that both buyers and service providers can assess their performance for strategic sourcing against and can become accredited to. So um, we're constantly refreshing and revising the work that we're doing in best practice in sourcing, in line with changing technologies, changing trends and changing regulations. And obviously, in addition to all of that, it's a constant focus on networking, bringing our community together uh, to share ideas, share thought leadership and produce content. Next slide, please. Okay, so our focus and our vision for the next five years is the evolution of um, our industry towards having a strategic sourcing function. As such, our umbrella theme for the work that we're doing in 2020 is, is that focus on how our members can transition to having a strategic sourcing function. 
So our examples show that the best performing companies have or are transitioning to a strategic sourcing function. And by this, we mean they've moved away from their siloed approaches and created a team of professionals that actually transcend the business. And this includes the business, operations, finance, technology, and procurement. Their focus is on how they can actually partner with the most dynamic and best of breed players in the sourcing ecosystem to help them achieve their objectives with a focus on adding value to the business rather than the old school approach of focusing on cutting costs. So this year's programme, um, we aim to provide empirical evidence that the best performing companies do indeed have a strategic sourcing function. And we'll obviously publish a whole host of case studies um, that show um, how companies have actually done that. So that umbrella programme gives, um, gives a good intro to the six main pillars of work that the GSA is undertaking um, to support the programme. So first of all, um, we are focused not on ITO now and not on BPO, but we see the future as being technology enabled business service delivery, where technology is no longer siloed and tech decisions reside with the business and not with the central IT function. So we've been running and will continue to run a sourcing tech series of events. And these are focused on introducing the new technologies to our membership base um, so that they can understand the techs and how they can actually bring them into their sourcing arrangements, either pre-tender or mid-arrangement. And we're covering a, a huge range of technologies from um, cyber, cybersecurity, through blockchain, infonomics, artificial intelligence, et cetera, et cetera. Second stream is um, CX, customer experience. Customer experience has to be at the heart of everything we do. And we've got a work stream which is gonna guide our members on how to actually achieve that. The third program of work is a look at automation uh, and a look at moving towards enterprise-wide automation. So we all know it's a massive hot topic. Um, we also know it's a hot topic that's been somewhat overhyped and hasn't necessarily delivered um, the full range of benefits um, that people expected. And that's because we believe that automation is really stuck at the category level. So we see significant opportunity for automation to become a much more strategic play. So we're leading a program of work that's gonna take automation to the boardroom table, prove the transformational value of enterprise-wide automation, and within that, we're going to be changing the language set. We had a really interesting debate in our symposium called the Big Bot Debate, um, where we looked at the, the fact that the use of the term robotics and imagery of robots was not helpful and was, in fact, holding automation back. So we're going to be continuing a look at the, the work there and the change of the language set. OK, Debbie. So the, the next three streams of work we're doing this year is a look at sustainability and how increasingly important the, the focus is on that. We know that our buyers are certainly beginning to select on much softer metrics and looking at the sustainability um, um, attributes within their supply chain. So this program is covering everything from carbon footprints, single use plastics, fourth party assurance and the modern slavery act. The next programme is a look at talent and wellness. Um, we, we know that wellness in the workplace is obviously of utmost importance. Um, we recently um, showcased the work of the Living Wage Foundation at our symposium, and we see that as a really important initiative for the sourcing industry and for our members to adopt uh, throughout their supply chains. We're also going to continue the great work that we've already been doing on attracting and upskilling talent. And this is actually looking at the competences and capabilities of the sourcing professional and match those competences and capabilities across both the buy and service provider side. We're also doing a lot of work with our ambassadors to actually attract more people, even school age and certainly university age, um, to enter sourcing as a profession. And the final work stream is that of um, the sourcing ecosystem. We are seeing a rapidly evolving sourcing ecosystem where highly blended alliances are often replacing the mega deals of the past. So we're helping make our members fit to partner with a variety of different organizations, including SMEs and startups. So within this stream, we are promoting the GSA's SME industry code of conduct. We're helping members change their due diligence so they can comply with risk but yet let the smaller players 
into their portfolios. We are launching GSA standard terms, which we believe will cover 80% of uh, the standard sourcing contract, and you'll expect that in spring. And two weeks ago, we held an event on the death of the RFP, and we're going to continue that work as we advocate a less bureaucratic approach to the traditional RFP process. So that gives a good platform to today's launch. So today's launch of the GSA partner platform is a critical piece of work within our sourcing ecosystem work stream. So we've established the sourcing ecosystem is becoming increasingly, uh, Debbie, can you go back please? and back again, <laughs> um, is, going, is becoming increasingly um, important. We recognize that companies are adapting themselves to become fit to partner with small and best of breed partners, both service providers and end buyers alike. But how do you find them? And how do you know if they are any good? So we've already revealed, revealed the solution, but obviously the solution is, thank you, Debbie, yeah, the GSA partner platform. Excellent. So uh, moving forward, we are living in dynamically changing times. So we know digital is transforming approaching approaches to serving customers. We know freemium content is demanded with willingness to pay only for depth insights and analysis. We also know that community models and community engagement is the future. Well, we are leveraging these changes to deliver an online platform that is free to appear on and free to use and offers community generated reviews and rankings of service providers. Platform will be a key disruptor for the sourcing industry, I believe, revolutionizing partner selection and bringing the process into the 2020s. So, Debbie, can you go back, please, twice? Thank you. So, um, so yes, so what we want you to do is to think booking.com for hotels or think checkatrade.com for finding a plumber. What we're launching with the GSA partner platform is a ranking system for the service provider community for the very first time. Page down, please, Debbie. So our aims for the GSA partner platform are, are many fold. They are firstly to give our members confidence that they are partnering with quality providers and we believe the partner platform will provide that reassurance. Secondly, to provide the broader sourcing ecosystem with a platform to promote their brands and their capabilities. A broader, more blended ecosystem can deliver dividends to our community and industry. Thirdly, is to present an open and unbiased and unsponsored view of the performance of service providers. And finally, we believe it will actually eradicate cowboys from our industry. We believe the sharing of real life experiences should help do just that. Okay, thank you, Debbie. So this slide basically reiterates our aims and objectives um, in words. We believe the GSA partner platform is gonna give our members the opportunity to listen to the voice of the community. It's a direct feedback mechanism. So we surveyed our members about the concept a couple of years ago, uh, and we got an overwhelming yes from our buy side members. We got a slightly more hesitant, tell us a little bit more about the whole concept from the service provider community. Well, in response, it's taken us a while, but we have found our ideal partner in, um, I found them in China, actually, uh, on a trip out there, but they are uh, Washington DC based. It's a company called Clutch, and it's a proven B2B ratings and reviews firm. So Clutch has already collated the profiles of over 100,000 companies in the technology, software, and digital space from around the world. 30,000 of these companies have already been reviewed. 
So the GSA is partnering with Clutch to deliver ratings and rankings of the service provider community for the very first time with the creation and the launch of the GSA partner platform. Page down, please, Debbie. Okay, so it's a really, really simple process. We're inviting all of our members to um, upload their profiles. Um, Elena will go through how to do that. I'm just giving you a top, top level view of the process. Um, to upload your profiles, invite your customers to submit reviews, or if you're a buyer, go on in and submit reviews against the service providers that you want to review. Um, the partner platform will share open and honest reviews from published customers. Um, all reviews are verified by Clutch, so we know that they're gonna be from bona fide customers. Over time, the partner platform will build up a rating of the different attributes of the service providers and put them in rankings. And over time, and well, actually dynamically, the partner platform will update leaderboards based on the latest reviews. So at this point, I'm now gonna hand over to you, Elena, um, if you'd like to um, do the demo of the partner directory. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Carrie. So just to quickly introduce myself, I'm Elena and I'm a product analyst here at Clutch. And today we're just gonna walk through the partner platform and show everyone how it works and what the steps are to get involved. So this is what the partner platform will look like. So Clutch went through and found some GSA affiliates. This is just a demo, but some GSA affiliates. And we created this partner platform for them to fall on. These are some of the profiles already on our site that already have profiles and already have reviews and have their profiles really curated. So this is what essentially signing up and then gaining some reviews your profile and your company would look like and where you would fall on the GSA partner platform. And then the image for scale focus is just a little bit more in depth of what your profile can look like. You fill out all the information yourself, so you make sure your profile is accurately represented, representative of your company, and then your clients can leave reviews and really just breaks down to show all potential customers the services you've offered, and then they can use all this information in the buyer journey themselves. So to break it down a little more, as Carrie said, Clutch is a B2B ratings and reviews firm. And so what we do is we're really the leader in third-party verified reviews. As Carrie mentioned, we have an entire customer experience team that will reach out and conduct each of these reviews that you see here. So this example has 17 reviews. These have all been conducted in-house by our team members. They hop on the phone for about a 10 or 15 minute call and try to get the full scope of work. So we see it as a way to really curate your reviews and make them into almost case study-like examples. And it also just helps with online reputation management for each company on our site. And as I mentioned before, just really help get you in front of more people, increase your visibility to potential customers. And when you click read full review, this is what you see. You see the full review that our analysts have conducted to help really explain the entire project from a $25,000 project to a couple million dollar project. We really wanna make sure we're illustrating the full scope of work to help bring as much clarity to the market as possible. So how to get started, how to create your profile on Clutch and ultimately fall on this GSA partner platform. So the link is right there, clutch.co slash get listed. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the demo directory, there is that get listed button that will take you directly to help you get started with this journey. So the first step is obviously to sign up. So you sign up through LinkedIn, which we've just found is industry best practice to help make everything as safe as possible. And from there, you pick your plan and pricing. You can choose a paid option, but as Carrie mentioned, this is completely free. It is completely free to get your reviews, to curate your profile. It's completely free. And most profiles on our site don't pay us anything. Um, that's an option for later, but not for those involved in this at all. And then exactly from there, you just can pick the basic option. And then once you choose your option, you get into the company information. And this is where you have full ownership to completely fill out your profile. If some of the questions aren't applicable to you, so you don't have a minimum hourly rate or don't have a minimum project size, 
not a problem. Feel free to just skip that. We just encourage to put as much information as possible so you feel you're accurately represented to those who are looking for, say, a BPO company, a social media marketing company, or a custom software company. And then the next step and really kind of the crux of your profile is the services you offer. So we recommend filling out these services. We have a couple hundred on there. So really whatever your company provides, we should hopefully have for you to fill out. And again, holistically representing your profile. So if you only do one service, not a problem, recommending then filling out 100%. And if you do five services, you can break down whatever makes the most sense for you and your company. And then step four, submitting those references. So once you completely fill out your clutch profile, you can then submit references of past engagements so then our customer experience team can reach out to them and conduct those reviews on the phone. I know I've said the phone a lot, your references can also leave an online review if they prefer that, if that's easier for them, but we just recommend the phone review because it allows our team to dig in and get as much detail as possible and really just benefit everybody in the market more. And then step five, once you complete your profile, you will hear from one of our analysts in about a day or two, they'll reach out to you and just help you walk you, help walk you through the platform, help answer any questions that may have come up. If you have any hesitations about references or reviews, they are there for that reason. And as soon as you get set up on Clutch, or even if you're in the middle of that process, feel free to email me. Elena at clutch.co and I will make sure you then fall on this partner platform because you do have to have a profile on clutch to obviously fall on clutch and fall on this partner platform and then I will make sure that all the GSA affiliates are properly represented and can really get you started with with that profile and just some initial questions we thought might come up just to give everyone a little bit more background on clutch this is some examples of what the profiles look like, not in the partner directory, but on our website. As you'll see, it's pretty much the exact same setup. This is just an example of some UX companies who are in the United Kingdom. In the breakdown, you can sort by review rating. So if I wanna sort by perfect five stars, you can sort by number of reviews, company name. You can also filter by, I'm only looking for companies that have over a thousand people, or I'm only looking for companies that do projects over 50,000. All those options are available for you to really help answer whatever questions if you're a buyer and help provide you with whatever um, companies you're really looking for. And then lastly, Carrie also mentioned those leaders matrix. So these are our leaders matrix. So we take those reviews and then we put them into a leaders matrix. This is Never pay for play, this is completely organic rank. You cannot pay for any spot on this leaders matrix. And again, you can click from the leaders matrix into those profiles. And this is just an example of number eight on this leaders matrix. Again, what their profile looks like. And it's the exact same breakdown as what your profile will look like on that partner directory. So we're really just trying to give a holistic view of your profile and then give customers who are coming, potential customers who are coming to look at your profile, an option to send you a message, visit your website, look at your portfolio items, the services you offer, and then read those verified reviews. Carrie, do you want to take some of these? So uh, uh, yeah, no, I have, sorry, a bit of issue unmuting for a second there. Um, so yeah, we've got some, we've got some questions which we will go through, but I was going to go through some of the most frequently asked questions. So I think they actually answer some of them anyway. So, so one of the questions is, uh, can it be sabotaged by competitors? Um, hopefully from the overview that you've been given from Elena, it's really, really clear that um, all customers are properly reviewed um, and, and checked out to be um, bona fide customers. So the login process is actually done via LinkedIn, which when I first saw, saw that, I thought it was a bit strange. But um, Elena, would you like to explain why the sort of like upload is via LinkedIn? Yeah, and we actually have our um, some other product members here with us who can more accurately answer that question just so you guys get all the proper information. Sure, my name is Amanda. I lead the product team at Clutch. Uh, just to clarify why we LinkedIn, there's a multiple 
uh, multiple reasons. Sorry, you need to speak up, Amanda, sorry. Oh, no worries. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, so there's multiple reasons why we require companies to log in with LinkedIn. One that Elena already mentioned is for security reasons so that we can make sure we have a, a secure platform that we are authenticating all of our users with and so we can like, with that. It also simplifies things from our end. Uh, and then the other reason is to actually verify that the person who is either building their profile or claiming an already built profile actually works for the company that they are trying to claim the profile for. And so that's really the main reason is for verification. And since we are a B2B platform, um, LinkedIn is one of the main forms of verification. Since LinkedIn is built to connect companies and most companies do have a LinkedIn account with um, employees that are connected to their company LinkedIn. Okay, that's great, thank you. Right, so a couple of questions we've had is what is the pricing? So um, to get loaded into the system, it's completely necessarily free of charge. To get profile and reviewed, obviously it's completely free, um, free of charge. To actually use it if you're a buyer and you actually want to find different players out there that meet your brief, it's completely free of charge. Um, there is a, a commercial model for clutch behind this, which I'll let them answer. But for the GSA, there is no commercial model behind this whatsoever. It's us trying to give our members a really valuable service, um, both for profiling them if they're service providers or for finding good um, new partners to, to work with if you're on, on the buy side, uh, proven partners. So no commercial model from the GSA, but Clutch Team, if you'd like to explain the commercial model for you, please, please do. Yeah, so our model is set up pretty similarly to Google's where you can pay um, to advertise on our reviews pages. As I mentioned, those leaders matrix never can pay to be on there. That's never gonna be affected by any kind of payment, but you can pay to be a sponsor on our reviews pages. And then we'll just put a flag on there that says sponsored. So those who are looking know that they are looking for someone who's paid for that advertising placement. And that is the main way that we make money. And I guess actually there is a slight hidden way that the GSA makes money. And that is there is a ranking, um, but you can choose the ranking metrics you use. Um, there is a ranking that GSA members are actually at the top of the ranking. So I guess that under underneath that, there is a GSA membership subscription fee because non-members can also put their profiles within here. But GSA members come to the top just, um, um, just, just for clarity. So next question, my service line is not represented there. How do I get in? Clutch, could you answer that? Yeah, of course. So as we mentioned, we have around 300 services and focus areas. So hopefully you find something that you feel at least can represent your company. And if not, we're always taking feedback and I'm happy to, again, my email is elena at clutch.co, happy to receive those emails as we continue to build out and hopefully cover all business to business services in the space. Excellent, thank you, thank you. Right, how do I get my service providers involved? So um, I'll answer that first, and then obviously Elena or Amanda, if you wanna jump in, please do. So from the GSA perspective, we are going to um, put all of the GSA um, members into the system. Now the way, and correct me if I'm wrong, Elena, but the way that um, Clutch works is that they can put very basic profile information, it's public domain information, into any given company's profile, then that company needs to claim their profile. So um, if you're a buyer and um, your service provider that you wanna review is not in there, we will put them in there as a basic rating, uh, a, a basic listing, and you can actually review against any, any given company. So every service provider in our community is gonna have the basic listing put in. Therefore, we would fully, fully, fully recommend you claim your profile and put the correct up-to-date promotional information about your service lines into it. Because um, obviously you're going to be there whether you like it or not. Um, you may as well make the most of this, uh, of this platform. But if you choose not to claim your profile, um, your customers um, can still rate and, 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 and review you. Anything additional to that, Elena? Nope, just reiterating exactly what you said, that basic profile is out there. And as we mentioned, we can't cover everyone. You know, new companies are popping up every day. So if you do feel, oh, we've missed you, again, not a problem, follow that get listed link and can get you set up right away. 
And if you find your company, claim it. And the same process will be there for you. You can go in, edit your profile. Your analyst will still reach out. Um, the process doesn't change at all. Just we want everyone to have a profile to be as happy as possible and really get the most out of this, this experience. And, and Kerry, just in terms of service providers, what do what, uh, what's your definition of service provider? Is that service providers plus uh, advisors, uh, ordering one analysts, or where do you see that service provider definition being? Okay, I think Elena just covered that off, is that we're constantly um, evolving and broadening um, the sort of companies that we can go that put in there. So consultancies can go on in, absolutely. Um, um, fire, finance and accounts, um, providers can go on in. At the moment, we don't actually have a law firm uh, offering, but there's no reason why that that can't change over time. So, um, uh, Elena, please give your view. Yeah, exactly. So, really, we try to overall accept and include anybody who's in the business to business space. So, if you're a B2C, unfortunately, we're probably going to say it's not a fit. Or if you're selling another platform or another software, it's probably not a fit because you're not a service. Um, as Carrie did mention, law firm legal services, we don't have at this time, but pretty much all their business to business ser services you should find on our site. Excellent. Um, next question is how much time must I invest? Um, so just, just to further clarify is you can do your reviews of your service providers either over the telephone, saves you writing, and, and that takes about 15 minutes, or you can do an online submission, which probably takes a little bit longer. Uh, Elena, how long do you think it takes to do an online, and how long do you think it takes to actually do a good profile? Yeah, of course. So whether you do the online review, if you're leaving a review, whether you do an online review or a phone review, they're the exact same questions asked. Some people just prefer to have the online review and maybe come back to it, update it as they feel necessary, or just take five minutes and answer it. And some people are more comfortable on the phone. The phone interview is about 10 to 15 minutes. If you wish to get into more detail, um, totally your call, but our analysts are instructed to take about a 10 to 15 minute phone call. And so that's really the only time we will ever, ever bother those who are leaving a review. Um, touch base once with them, and then once the review is published, we'll just email that reviewer letting them know it's online, but that's really the only time they'll hear from us. And as a service provider, it's really up to you how involved you want to be with your profile. Some people touch base with their clutch analyst and the variety of offerings multiple times a week. Some people we hear from once a month and some never. It truly is a personal preference. We encourage the more you curate and take advantage of your profile, just the more visibility you'll see, the more you'll get out of the partner platform. But it really is a personal call how much you and your team want to invest. Okay, great. Right, I'm just going to do a slight interlude now. Um, in your inboxes, you'll have received an email from the GSA for a link to a survey to get your feedback on what you actually think of the platform and your, um, your propensity to use it. So it's three questions, really short, it'll take you two minutes, so please do you know, have a quick look at that survey and answer those questions. And if we get enough responses, I'll give you live feedback um, before the webinar is over as to what those responses are. So do take a look. Right, obviously this, um, the, the work that you've done in the past has been for, for project-based work. Um, obviously we're moving this into uh, the service provider community and there we don't necessarily really work on projects. We've got really long, you know, historically we've had very long-term um, working relationships between um, our, our buyer and service provider partners. So um, how do we actually um, provide reviews when you've got a really long-term uh, relationship with a, an organization? Elena? Yeah, so this is actually a question we get fairly often, and our policy is we do allow one review per engagement or relationship. That being said, we understand that a lot of service providers offer the same service over a long period of time. You hire one SEO company and they provide that SEO for you for multiple years, or you've hired one web development company and they built your website and then revamped it a few years later. That is going to be one review, but in that one review, again, why we prefer hopping on the phone, is the team will ask about the entire project and the entire span of that time. So the goal is really to get a holistic review and so that those who are reading it can see the work that has happened over those five years. And the pricing then will also represent, we'll ask you kind of how much you would say you invested with them 
And so we make sure we include what you've invested with them over that five year process. Say, you know, one more year goes by and you want to come back and update that review again, you absolutely can do it. And we actually really encourage updating reviews because things can have changed, have turned one way or the other or another. You have a new project manager, you have a new point of contact, just things happen. We really encourage you updating that review and our team will make sure again that is accurately represented represented and we will say the original review was conducted on this date updates happened at this time at this date and really just to show that full scope of work again our motto is bringing as much clarity to the market as possible so it helps everybody when you review the full engagement and continue to update that review okay right so thank you for that i'm just looking through the questions that we've actually had submitted um, can bpo consultants also register on the platform we've answered that and yes they can um, how much are you charging for the service? That's, I think, been answered um, in that we are not charging for this. And therefore, there is no differentiated charging between different size of BPOs. So I can dismiss that question. Steve Parker asked a question. How much history does the top level star rating include? Does the system enable you to assess recent performance versus long term historic view? I'm hoping the answer that Elena just gave um, covers that off is that there's one review, but you can keep adding to it. So you will, and um, I believe Elena, that it's the most recent performance at the top. Is that right? Sure. So you can, when looking at reviews, we allow you to sort by either review recency, uh, the default is by relevance, and that's just a combination of most recent review and the kind of score we give to the review. And that's just because we want the most helpful reviews to be at the top. They're kind of similar to the, the Amazon model that a lot of you are probably familiar with of just providing the most relevant reviews first, but you're always able to sort by most recent review. In terms of also addressing this question, I would just include that we do take into account review recency and our overall uh, rating of each company. And the way we do that is we, we typically don't go into too much detail about it, but as an overview, is we give more credit to more recent reviews and as they uh, become older, so four or five, six years old, we obviously still think those reviews are valuable, but we do take that into our review scoring to adjust the credit for more recent reviews to make sure that companies are getting recent reviews over and over so that uh, the, their performance is reflected in all of their reviews and really their most recent reviews. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, so we've got a, a question here, which actually looks at, well, perhaps there's been a major change or a major event that has actually affected the supplier. Um, is there a way of um, putting a beware element to the reliance on historic performance? Um, is there a way for a um, service provider to respond to a review? Yeah, absolutely. So every review we will reach out, not every review, I'm sorry, every review under a certain star rating, we will let the service provider know, hey, this review you just received, and you do have an opportunity to respond to it. All reviews and all responses have to follow our guidelines. So no one is allowed to just write whatever they want or kind of do whatever they want, but they are allowed a response. So again, those looking at that profile, get a full sense of work, can read the responses, can read the reviews. And that's again, where the recency comes into play. Um, we've found that people know not every project is perfect 100% of the time. No one can be perfect 100% of the time. So seeing that full engagement is very helpful. Okay, that's excellent. Right, got a question from a gentleman in Egypt. Yes, we absolutely, this is a global, global partner platform. So we want um, to upload all of the service providers um, from around, around the world uh, and we'll be actively encouraging um, yeah, everybody to get involved. Um, and obviously it's a great tool for selling into the UK marketplace. How many partners will we have on the platform? Um, we're aiming to have- Thousands. We are aiming to have <laughs> thousands of partners on the platform because the GSA is making a massive push and a big launch into the SME and startup community. And we'll be getting all of those members onto the platform as well as the more traditional service providers. But yeah, uh, immediately we'll be putting up a couple of hundred service providers from the GSA immediate community in, into the system. But yes, thousands is the plan. I mean, I, get, I guess stating the obvious, Kerry, if you look back at um, booking.com or TripAdvisor or whatever, it had to start somewhere in terms of people providing feedback, yeah. And once people start providing feedback, then 
people got benefit from that feedback and then they provided even more feedback themselves. So, you know, an ask for everybody on this call is from the supply perspective, create your profiles or update your profiles. And ask from a buyer perspective and um, advisor perspective, et cetera, is to start using it because I think the benefit, the more you put in, the more you'll get out uh, is the obvious statement. Yep, absolutely. So a question here is how can you claim the company profile and how do you make sure that the person claiming the profile works for the said service provider? Elena. Yeah, of course. So if the company profile is not claimed, there's just a big claimed button down at the bottom where we kind of showed those reviews are and where you see the service lines, there's a red claimed button. You can just click that. And again, we go through that same verification process to make sure the person claiming the profile does indeed work for the company and that we're comfortable giving ownership over to them. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, again, um, customer, customers can be based anywhere around the world to review you as well. So, um, so it's really, really a global platform. So that answers that question, I hope. So what uptake do you foresee from buyer members using the directory? It was the buyer members that really wanted us to actually launch this directory. So we believe the uptake will be really strong. Um, certainly it's going to be used as a tool for them to actually find potential partners and to assess the performance of those potential partners. The GSA is all about community. So we will be providing a role to assist buyers, um, elicit more information from some of the reviewers um, and to, to, to really sort of like ascertain the performance of companies to put on to their, their long or, or short lists. Um, so yeah, but as Mark said, we really, really are reliant on this being a community initiative. So it's not just there for you to read, it's there for you to actually write. So we really do need active participation and contribution from the buyers to, um, to rate uh, their, their service providers for this to really take off and be of benefit to everybody. How, what steps would you take to moderate reviews and how would you deem whether or not moderation is necessary? Yeah, I think you've just answered that one, haven't you? Yeah, exactly the same thing we just mentioned. We give everyone a space to respond and to leave a review. And a lot of that goes into just verifying everything before we even publish a review and put it out there. We make sure everything checks out. Just checking, have I done this one? How do you claim the company profile? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like yeah, so I think those are all the questions that we've actually had posted. If anybody's got any additional questions, quickly type them now. If not, we'll go into a quick, um, a quick summary. So um, as I said, we're gonna be putting all of our service provider community into the partner platform. Um, we are gonna be um, using the partner platform as a way of finding examples of best practice and further promoting those best practice examples within our community. So it's going to be a form of content generation and case study generation for the GSA to use within its speaker portfolio um, and all of its events as well. And we certainly also will be looking at using the partner platform for some of our awards categories too. So, um, so lots of um, different sort of like steps coming from that. So I guess really it's just a call to action and the call to action is for you guys to um, get on board. When will it be available? It's available immediately. So um, it's available immediately to upload and it's available immediately to use. We don't quite have, it's still in beta, we don't quite have enough companies in there yet. But um, as you can see from some of our members, Scale Focus is in there and it's got 17 reviews against it. Um, Cyclum was in there and I think they had six or seven reviews against them. So there are companies in there that are actively using it and we are going to be promoting it with immediate effect. So yeah, it's, it's, it's available now. Okay, so one last question has come on in. If a profile isn't claimed, how will you contact a company that might be receiving a negative review that you wish to moderate? Yep, so we'll do the same outreach. We will email you and let you know, even if you haven't claimed your profile, hey, you have a profile on Clutch and it's recently rece received this review. Um, but kind of the exact same way you would leave a review for a restaurant on Yelp, negative or positive, we're letting you know and you're able to respond to it. 
But if we don't hear back, we don't hear back, we do our due diligence, but um, some people choose not to respond and that's totally fine as well. And in addition to that, the GSA is going to be constantly reviewing its partner platform. So if we see that there are members within it that are getting negative reviews, we will be going directly to that member and alerting them that that is actually going on. So we're going to be constantly moderating this platform ourselves. And in terms of how we're going to be promoting it, um, it will be, um, it'll be on the front page. So there'll be a link to it on the front page of our website um, permanently. Um, we will be um, promoting it in, um, through the media. We'll be putting a press release out about it tomorrow. And um, once it's past beta, uh, we'll be running all sorts of um, advertising marketing programs to promote the partner platform. But that's only when it's past um, beta and we've got a, enough um, claimed profiles in there. Okay, um, just uh, yeah, someone's trying to register online now. Yes, you do go through LinkedIn first. Um, and then you fill in the information on the Clutch website. So yeah, LinkedIn is the verification tool that we're actually using to prove that you are you. Okay, Mark, have you got any closing remarks you'd like to make? Uh, well, just, just to reinforce, so, um, this is in response to a members, the members' request. So um, we're responding to, to members. Uh, it, it is quite a disruptive play. Well, it is a disruptive play and it's in the fact that it's the first in the marketplace, in our marketplace, but is certainly commonplace in every other marketplace that we experience on a daily basis. Um, the more we use it, the more benefit we'll get out of it. Uh, so, you know, I urge you to all sign up as service providers or use it as buyers. And the last point that I just want to make is the GSA is a fantastic program for this year in releasing online content such as this, following things like the uh, legal helpline. And so this is one of many for this year. And uh, so I would be part of this, but also more importantly, be part of all the other good uh, things that GSA is doing this year. That's all for me. Excellent. Um, I think, is there anything else that you'd like to say? Say Elena or Amanda? Nope, I uh, would just appreciate the time. And if anyone does have any questions, always available to answer emails. It's Elena at clutch.co. And we are just very used to having people sign up with profiles and obviously our job is reviews. So feel free to reach out. We're happy to answer all of it. And I just sounds like our goals are the same to add as much clarity to the market as possible. So excited for all that's to come. Okay, um, yes, we will be making this presentation available via the website, you can share it and we will also um, email out to everybody um, the steps of registration so that it's really, really crystal clear. I'm um, sorry, I get a few more chats in. Um, Elena is spelled A-L-A-I-N-A. So I think that's the, the last of the questions. So we're really, really excited about this. We do believe it's going to be a game changer. Um, we do believe it's also a tool to stop the pay to play, which is one of the, the issues um, that's close to my heart sometimes when it comes to buyers um, um, asking for long lists. Um, it removes that whole pay to play piece. Um, and yeah, I think it levels the playing field. It's a fantastic platform to promote companies uh, and their full portfolio of services, uh, especially some of the smaller players, which obviously is incredibly important to the sourcing ecosystem. And then for the larger players, it's a great way of actually having fair representation as to their performance uh, and you know, fair representation as to why and how they fall where they do fall in, um, in leaderboards. Um, so you guys do get on board and as ever, I'm fully available for any conversations, questions, if you want to take this offline. So thank you very much indeed for your time. The webinar has been recorded and that is also available to share and view. So um, thanks again and have great evenings. Goodbye. <laughs>